What's up, YouTube? Thanks for clicking on my channel. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be learning how to make cloth for Adobe Dimensions. And this comes courtesy of a request by Chrissy Colton uh, from one week ago. And she wants to know if it's possible to make clothing in Dimensions, please. Uh, well, it's not possible to make it in Dimensions, but it is possible to make it for Dimensions. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So I got to give you guys a heads up because I don't make a lot of videos of these regularly and it's not because I don't want to or I don't necessarily enjoy making them, but it is because I don't spend a lot of time in Dimensions anymore because I've moved on to stronger software. Uh, so if you are still using Dimensions, then I would recommend picking up a free 3D program that helps make your process in Dimensions much more powerful. The program I'm going to be using is called Blender and that's what we'll be using to model our clothing. So I'm just going to open up my Blender app right here. And as it opens up, this is your start scene. And so I'm going to, first thing is delete this cube. I'm going to hit the X key and that brings up our delete menu. I'm going to click delete. I'm going to hit shift A and I'm going to, that which brings up this add menu and I'm going to add a mesh cube. Okay. Now we have our cube, and I'm going to move it up so it sits a little bit at the base, and then I'm going to hit Shift-A again and add a mesh plane, hit S, and then drag my mouse cursor out to scale it, G and Z, to grab and move it down on the Z axis. And I kind of want a little bit of space, maybe a little more space. Yeah, make it a little floaty cube like that. So now I'm going to hit Shift-A again, and I'm going to add a third plane, and I'm going to scale this up a little bit less, G and Z again, move it up on the Z axis. And now this one is going to be our cloth. All right, so right now this isn't really much of anything, but so we got to make this turn into cloth. In order to do that, we need to first make sure it's a dense enough uh, mesh in order for it to actually have any kind of uh, detail in it. So we need to subdivide the surface, come over here and click simple we don't want to change the shape of our object and we're going to click this and turn it up to six all the way to show you what's going to happen with this is if i hit tab this brings us into our edit mode and hit wireframe view so you see the uh, number of points this has four points when i come out of edit mode and i click apply now it has all of these points and 3d programs use these points to identify detail so the more points you have, the bigger the file is going to be. So you need to find like a good in-between, between something that looks high resolution enough and something that's not going to break down your computer. So I think right now, this should be okay. So now I'm going to come out of wireframe mode up here and click solid view. And now let's identify our cloth and our collisions. So with our cloth selected, come over here to your panel and click this cool icon, the physics properties, and we're going to click cloth click on the cube, we're going to click collision, click on the final plane, and we're going to click collision. And that's it. You just click spacebar, and then you just watch your magic happen, you know? And I'm going to click pause, maybe go back a couple frames. Yeah, I think that's sort of a fun frame. As you can see, it's just already calculating itself. Um, it looks really boxy, and that's for a couple reasons. One is because our smoothing our shading is flat, we need to make sure it's smooth by right clicking and clicking shade smooth. And we still get some artifacts happening here. And how you get rid of that is to come over here and click subdivide surface. And let's turn this up to, I think three should be okay. Now this looks pretty good, but I think there's still something else to do here because this was made from an infinitely thin plane. So our cloth is now infinitely thin which doesn't exist. Cloth is never infinitely thin, so we're going to add a solidify modifier. And we're getting a little bit of some weirdness happening. Actually, I'm going to turn this back down to three, and I'm going to make sure that my fabric can collide with itself, because I think, if I'm not wrong, self-collision is automatically turned off. Self-collision. All right. Yeah, you can mess around with a lot of these settings and make pretty much any kind of fabric or plasticky wrappable surface of some kind. 
Uh, I'm going to click play again, let it run through with its self collisions turned on. And now when we do our solidify modifier, we shouldn't really get uh, any of that weird overlapping too much. And I think that looks fine. So as you can see, our solidifiers turn on and we don't have those weird clippings. And so we are done. Terrific. I'm just going to click this button to turn off all that annoying stuff so we can see it like this. And just to make the export a little quicker, I'm just going to delete everything. Uh, that's right, it's X key to delete. I'm going to click on my cube that you can't see and hit X and delete that. Wrong cube. I'm going to hit that cube and delete that cube. So if you want to get this in dimensions, you just click File, Export, Wavefront OBJ, and I'm just going to put mine on my desktop and export it right there. So this imports into dimensions really well, and you can slap on any of your textures and dimensions and put it on any of your scenes, and it's going to function like uh, just any other mesh you would have in your normal assets. All right, so let's open up Adobe Dimensions and import the asset that we just created. I'm going to come over here to Create New. I'm clicking on it. There we go. Command I to import our untitled OBJ. And I'm just going to pull it up on the bottom of the scene, click F to focus on it, and wow, that looks exactly like what we made. Let's slap on some materials. Yeah, let's just. Yeah, you know, let's match all that stuff, why not? Yeah, ma match image, please. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. It sort of matched. I guess that looks like it's sitting on the floor. Uh, yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, you know, Dimensions is good at what it does. It does good stuff. And that's pretty much it. Um, so basically... You don't have to just make this with cloth. Obviously, you can make any kind of cloth you want. You can make clothing, stitched fabrics, towels, and the best way to do that, because I'm not going to show you how to do that, because there's people who know how to do that better than me, is to come on over here to your YouTubes and just type in Blender Cloth. And there's a bunch of really brilliant people uh, showing how to make terrific stuff. Um, this is a guy probably showing what I did. This is a guy showing a little more complex, uh, getting that, some nice, beautiful fabric wrinkles, how to stitch in clothing. Uh, and this is actually a brush tool where it uh, brushes in the wrinkles of fabric. So it's actually a lot quicker than using a simulation, less computer intensive. And if you don't actually need to have your simulate something, then this might be a, a really good tool for you. Towels, it's all good. Like you can make literally anything in Blender and 90% of it will import into uh, Adobe Dimensions. And luckily for cloth, the entire cloth imports really well. So thanks for clicking on my video. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and learned something useful. Uh, if you did, uh, a like and subscribe would really help out the channel. If not, then you can dislike it and not come back. Uh, otherwise, thanks for tuning in. If you have any suggestions, like Chrissy Colton, then I'm all up to hear them, because otherwise I don't really know what to do with this channel anymore. Again, I don't really use Adobe Dimensions. Um, it's great software, it's very powerful, but like it's just kind of like a bit beginner for me um, in terms of the control that I like to have over my scene. Adobe Dimensions doesn't offer that for me, so I just I have to use different programs, more uh, robust 3D programs, and Blender is as robust as they all come, and it's a free program, so uh, you can do tremendous things with this. Uh, it's got its own render in here, so you don't actually need to use uh, dimensions anymore if you don't want to, but it's actually it's a bit of a learning curve. But luckily, there's lots of tutorials out there to give quick tips and tricks on how to make all your stuff look great. So thanks for tuning in, and I hope you guys enjoyed.